and a very warm welcome to CIT and CRT's live phone and interactive program. In this maths class for all the 12th class students, we are here to discuss the topic differential equations. Well, what are differential equations and what are these equations that we are about to solve? My name is Tanvi Khurana and today we have a guest with us who will solve differential equations and tell us the concept of it. If you have any doubt or want to ask us, you can call us quickly. Our number is 8800 अगर आप हमें ईमेल करना चाहें तो ईमेल आईडी होगा dth.class12 atrcit.nic.in इस वक्त आप हमें लाइव देख रहे हैं पीएमई विद्या चैनल नंबर 12 पर और साथ ही साथ हमारे YouTube चैनल पर भी जो कि है NCERT ऑफिशियल जिसके लाइव चैट बॉक्स में आप अपने सवाल लिखकर हम तक पहुंच जा सकते हैं 4 बजे तक हमारे मेहमान हमारे गेस्ट हमारे साथ रहेंगे और बहुत सारी बातचीत करेंगे तो चलिए आपका इंट्रोडक्शन करवाते हैं हमारे आज के मेहमान से वी हैव विद अस मिस्टर राहुल सोफर्ट अ वेरी वार्म वेलकम टू यू सर वेलकम स्टूडेंट्स थैंक यू सर इज अ लेक्चरर इन मैथमेटिक्स फ्रॉम एयर फोर्स गोल्डन जुबली इंस्टीट्यूट न्यू दिल्ली so let's begin this conversation और हम सर से ही पूछते हैं कि सर ये जो concept है differential equations का वो आज आप हमारे viewers को twelfth class के students को specially कैसे समझाने वाले हैं सर या actually these students have already done integration very important concept or you can say part in our twelfth class mathematics is about calculus तो calculus is approximately around 35 marks uh, in their board exams also and it plays a very important part in our mathematics. Mm. So in calculus, we have differential calculus as well as integral calculus. And in the integral calculus, we have some chapters in which we do integration and then we have got area uh, under the curve which is application of integrals and then our last chapter of uh, integral calculus is differential equation. So we'll be going to study this chapter differential equation and it comes under integral calculus. Okay. So shall we begin? Yeah, we'll begin. And uh, one main important thing uh, which I uh, will advise students is mm -hmm. that your integration should be perfect. Because you know in differential equation, we are using integration. Mm -hmm. So um, when you do this chapter, uh, ensure that uh, the differential equation you can be easily done if the concept of integrations are thoroughly done. Okay. So all the rules, all the formulas which you have learnt in integration like um, by parts or by partial fraction, all these things will come in differential equation. So in differential equation, we'll be using integration mm -hmm. and I think students will not find uh, much problem if uh, all their concepts which they have learnt earlier in uh, integration, they have revised. Okay. Yeah. So we'll start with the differential equation and this is our ninth chapter uh, class 12th in NCRT book. Mm. So to begin with, uh, uh, students should know what is the differential equation. Th this is very important to know what is the difference between a direct question of integration and a differential equation. So this is a definition. A differential equation is an equation involving independent variable x, dependent variable y, and derivative of dependent variable with respect to the independent variable. Now see, the definition, uh, what this, does this definition says? It is an equation, it is a relation between three things. First is independent variable x, second is dependent variable y, and the third is derivative of the dependent variable with respect to independent variable. And if you just concentrate on this derivative of dependent variable with respect to the independent variable, that means we are trying to indicate towards dy by dx. So a differential equation will always involve the derivatives. So that is very important to know. Like you may have terms of um, x alone, you may have terms of y, you may have terms in which both um, x and y are coming together. But the most important thing is in a differential equation, you will always have dy by dx. So that is the most important thing to know. A differential equation will always contain the differential coefficients. So uh, like uh, as you have done earlier um, in your 10th class or in your 11th class, quality equations we have done. So in quality equation, the general equation is ax square plus bx plus c equal to 0. But it doesn't mean that a quality equation will ha always have a constant term or uh, a quality equation may not have a linear term as well. 
but the most important thing is that the quadratic equation will always have a term of x square. That means uh, if we say a x square plus b x plus c equal to 0, then we say a, b, c are real numbers where a is non-zero. Why we say a is non-zero? Because it should have a quadratic term. So similarly here, a differential equation should always have the differential coefficient. By differential coefficient, we mean that the derivative dy by dx or higher order derivatives d2 y by dx2 or even further d3 y by dx3, one of these uh, differential coefficients or derivatives should be there. You can have more than one also, but uh, terms of x and y along with the derivatives forms a differential equation. Now I hope uh, this is clear to you what a differential equation is. Now next is, uh, we are taking some examples of differential equation. Uh, first one is x dy by dx is equal to x square minus 2y, x is not equal to 0. Now see, the first example, it is clear that it contains dy by dx, then it has a term of x square minus 2y and where x is not equal to 0. So this is the first example of a differential equation. It contains the first order derivative, this is dy by dx. The second example of a differential equation uh, which I have taken here is dy by dx is equal, uh, dy by dx plus 2y is equal to sin x. So again it is a differential equation, it contains a term of x which is sin x on the right hand side. It contains a term of y which is 2y, but the most important thing which I was just telling uh, you was that this derivative should, will always be there, dy by dx. Now, uh, I am uh, switching on to the next example, y dx plus x minus y square within brackets dy equal to 0. Now here also some of you might be thinking that the differential coefficient is uh, not visible here, dy by dx is not there. But uh, if you just simplify this a bit, you take this term y dx on the right hand side. So we can write it as x minus y square dy is equal to minus y dx and then rearranging the term we can um, the next step would be to write dy by dx is equal to y square minus x upon y. So if I take the second term on the right hand side or any one of these terms to the right hand side from there I can obtain the value of dy by dx. So what you have to know is that you can convert it into the form in which dy by dx will be there right. So this is again a differential equation and finally I am taking this example, this example seems to be slightly different from others. If you see the fourth one, fourth example, here dy by dx plus 2y tan x is equal to sin x and where y equal to 0 when x is equal to pi by 3. Some additional information is given along with the differential equation. So these type of um, differential equations are uh, a specific in which the solution is specific. All, all the other, the first three ones is slightly different from the other because in the fourth one, it is a differential equation, but some initial information is also provided to us. And this information y equal to 0 and x equal to pi by 3 helps us to find the solution of the differential equation and that to a particular solution. So this I will explain at length at the later stage, but um, the one thing uh, you can just notice here is that the first three are um, of one, um, the, the fourth one is slightly different from the first three because it has uh, these initial value conditions which I will explain you later. And finally, the fifth one, the last one, in this differential equation, if you see, you have twice of d2y by dx2 plus dy by dx whole cube equal to 0. Now see here, uh, the term of x is not separately, the term of x is not coming and uh, the term of y also is not there, but the differential coefficients are there, which is uh, the uh, main important thing in a differential equation, these should always be there. So it has got two derivatives. One is dy by dx, uh, this is the first order derivative if you differentiate y with respect to x, you will get dy by dx and the next one is this, the first one, the first term is d2y by dx2, this is the second order derivative. So all of these are some examples of differential equation and uh, now we will proceed further to know some other uh, terms which are involved with the differential equation. Now uh, before we start uh, solving a differential equation. Uh, we have to uh, be clear with some of the important concepts. First is the order of the differential equation. Now what is the order of the differential equation? Order of the differential equation is defined as the order of the highest order derivative of the dependent variable with respect to the independent variable involved in the differential equation. 
So, uh, like when we talk of order of a differential equation, in the previous slide also you would have noticed that in the first example which I took, the derivative was dy by dx. So, in the second one also we had dy by dx. But in the last one, in the fifth one, in, uh, besides dy by dx, we were also having d2y by dx2. So, see, in all these, uh, we do not have only dy by dx. Sometimes we may uh, have d2y by dx2 or uh, both the terms. In one of them, we are having dy by dx. In the other, we are having d2y by dx2. So, the order is something to do with these differential coefficients. So, uh, like now again we come back to our definition. The definition of order of a differential equation is uh, now in uh, uh, with respect to the equations we have just done or discussed. If you see order of a differential equation is defined as the order of the highest order derivative occurring in the differential equation. So, now if I am taking this example, see here we have two differential coefficients. Differential coefficients I means two derivatives. The first term has d3y by dx3, it is a third order derivative and the second term consists or contains second order derivative which is d2y by dx2. So, if we have two terms in, in, in the first it is the third order derivative, you know what is this d3y by dx3? This symbol means that you are differentiating y with respect to x three times. If y is a function of x, you differentiate it for the first time you will get dy by dx you differentiate dy by dx again with respect to x, you will get d2y by dx2. And then again you differentiate d2y by dx2 with respect to x, that means what I am trying to say, d dx, d dx of d2y by dx2, that is d3y by dx3. So, the highest order derivative or the order of the highest derivative which is occurring in this differential equation is 3. Therefore, we will say the order of this differential equation is 3. So, is, uh, you should not confuse with this d2y by dx2. If uh, there is only one term and the highest order derivative is d2y by dx2, then the order will be 2. But here you have two differential coefficients, two derivatives. One is d2y by dx2, but the highest one is d3y by dx3. Therefore, the order of this differential equation is 3. I hope this is clear to all of you. And in case you have any uh, doubt, you can always send your queries uh, that will be answered. Next is the degree of the differential equation. So, before we uh, start solving a differential equation or go further, we have to first understand order and degree of a differential equation. So, coming to degree of a differential equation, the degree of a differential equation is the highest power positive integral index of the highest order derivative involved in the differential equation when the differential equation forms a polynomial equation in all its derivative. So, this uh, seems to be slightly confusing. Uh, unlike order, um, order I told you is the highest order derivative occurring in the differential equation. But degree is the, high, uh, the power of the highest order derivative. The degree of a differential equation is the power of the or the highest power of the highest order derivative involved or occurring in the differential equation. But these three last few lines are also important. Uh, when the differential equation is a polynomial equation in all its derivatives. This uh, subsequently in examples which uh, will follow, uh, I will try to make this clear that what is the meaning of uh, the differential equation is a polynomial equation in all the derivatives. Then only we are able to define the degree of a differential equation. But before I switch on to some more examples, these symbols are used here. Y dash stands for dy by dx, y double dash stands for d2y by dx2 and y triple dash for d3y by dx3. In our NCRT books also, these symbols are used that uh, sometimes instead of writing d2y by dx2, we use these symbols f double dash that is for the second order derivative and so on. It can be further also. So, degree of the differential equation this is. Now, what about the degree of this differential equation? In this case, if you look at it, there are two terms, both the terms have the differential coefficients or both the terms have the derivatives. In the first term, you have third order derivative d3y by dx3. In the second term contains second order derivative d2y by dx2. Now, if you just compare them, which is the highest order derivative, I have told you order of this differential equation is 3. 
because the highest order derivative is 3. It has been y is differentiated 3 times to obtain d3 y by dx3. So, if you compare these two, highest order derivative is 3. So, we will say that it is a third order differential equation. Now, the third order differential equation is because of this symbol, the third order derivative. What is the power of this third order derivative? The power of this uh, third order derivative, the positive integral index of this third order derivative is 1. So, this d3 y by dx3 here is raised to the power 1, we, we are not writing it. Therefore, the order of this differential equation is 3 as I have told you earlier, but the degree is 1. So, because this third order derivative is raised to the power 1, therefore, we will say its degree is 1. Uh, you know, generally students, they tend to confuse between this. They will look at this 3 and then they will have a feeling that the highest power is 3. But we have to take the power of the highest order derivative. The power may not be the highest. So, here uh, as it is clear now, I hope all of you that the highest order derivative was d3y uh, by dx3 and it is raised to the power 1. Therefore, the degree of this differential equation is 1. Now, uh, we will discuss some more uh, questions based on order and degree of the differential equation. Now, determine the order and degree of the following differential equations. Now, if you look at these questions, if you look at the first question, now this is a second uh, order differential equation. How can I say it is a second order differential equation? because uh, you have d2y by dx2 here. So, d2y by dx2 means it is a second order differential equation, right? So, the order of this differential equation is 2. The first question I am taking this one, this one, first one. The order is 2 and the degree is 1 because there is only one highest order derivative is 2 and it is raised to the power 1. Therefore, order 2, degree 1. Now, come to the second question. Now, if we come to the second question, y triple prime or y 3 dash plus 2 y double dash and then plus y dash is equal to 0. Now, basically if you uh, convert it into the other format, we can write d 3 y by dx 3 plus twice of d 2 y by dx 2 plus d y by dx equal to 0. So, now if you look at it, what is the highest order uh, derivative uh, occurring in this or involved in this differential equation? I am talking about this second question. So, the highest order derivative in this differential equation is 3 because y triple dash is coming. So, d 3 y by d x 3. So, the order of this differential equation is 3 and what is the degree? The degree of the, this differential equation will be 1 because I am just interested in the power of this y triple dash. So, the power of d 3 y by d x 3, it is raised to the power 1 that means order is 3 and degree is 1 for the second differential equation. Now, I hope it is clear to you and one important thing which we were mentioning in the definition that the degree of a differential equation is only defined if all the derivatives occurring in the differential equation forms a polynomial equation. So, you know polynomial equation means the each of the derivatives should be raised to a positive integral index. So, this is very important to know uh, that while finding the degree you have to be careful that all the derivatives uh, forms a polynomial equation. Y may not form a polynomial equation, the variable x and y these terms may not form the uh, form polynomial equation, only the derivatives starting from dy by dx onwards whatever uh, is coming in that. Now, uh, similarly if you come and uh, just see question number third, y triple dash whole square that means third order derivative is raised to the power 2 plus y double dash raised to the power 3 plus y dash raised to the power 4 plus y raised to the power 5 equal to 0. This differential equation is of order 3 because the highest order derivative occurring in it is d 3 y by d x 3 because of this term and this is raised to the power 2. Therefore, the order is 3 and degree is 2. So, uh, intentionally I have not given the answers here because then that thinking process um, uh, some students probably can uh, try and find out before I answer, I give them some time so that they think uh, what will be the order and degree and then when I am telling them they, they are able to know whether they have uh, answered it correctly or not. So, in the third one order is 3 and degree is 2.
डोंट गेट कंफ्यूज विद दिस थ्री एंड फोर एंड मे बी फाइव फाइव तो इज पावर ऑफ वाई ओनली सो इट इज इट हैज नो रोल टू प्ले बट द अदर डेरीवेट इज यू नो द लोवेस्ट ऑर्डर डेरीवेट इज द हाइएस्ट पावर सो डोंट गेट कन्फ्यूज सो फॉर द सेम रीजन द हाइएस्ट ऑर्डर डेरीवेटिव हैज द पावर टू दे फॉर द ऑर्डर इज थ्री एंड डिग्रीज टू आई होप इट इज क्लियर टू ऑल ऑफ यू नाउ कमिंग टू दिस फोर्थ क्वेश्चन वाई लॉग वाई डी एक्स माइनस एक्स डी वाई इक्वल टू जीरो यू कैन फर्स्ट कन्वर्ट इट इन टू डी वाई बाई डी एक्स फॉर्मेट टेक दिस टर्म ऑन द राइट हैंड साइड वाई लॉग वाई वाई लॉग वाई डी एक्स इज इक्वल टू एक्स डी वाई देन यू कैन राइट डी वाई बाई डी एक्स इज इक्वल टू वाई लॉग वाई अपॉन एक्स सो अगेन इट इज क्लियर टू यू वंस यू राइट इट इन डी वाई बाई डी एक्स फॉर्म दिस इज ओनली वन टर्म कंटेनिंग द डेरीवेटिव एंड दैट इज ऑल्सो the the first order derivative so if you look at this fourth question you have dy by dx equal to some function of x and y right so since you have dy by dx is equal to some function of x and y we can say the order is 1 and the degree is also 1 because uh, dy by dx raised to power 1 is coming order 1 degree 1 now let us move ahead uh, i'll give you some time can you guess uh, in the fifth question fifth differential equation what is the order in degree i hope most of you have guessed it now in this fifth one the order is 1 because of dy by dx and the degree is also 1 degree is 1 because dy by dx is raised to the power 1 and while finding the degree we are just uh, scanning the whole differential equation that no derivative uh, should contradict that polynomial equation all the derivatives should form the polynomial equation which it is forming now uh, what about 6 all of you think uh, first uh, what will be the order and degree in this question number 6 it's slightly different from the previous ones i hope you have guessed it right see order almost all the students will find properly order mein kuch problem nahi hai highest order derivative is d4y by dx4 see here both symbolic forms are used this d4y by dx4 is the fourth, fourth order derivative and plus sign y triple dash so y triple dash means d3y by dx3 so if you look at this the sixth one there are two derivatives occurring in the differential equation one is d3y by dx3 and the other one is d4y by dx4 so uh, if you compare the third order derivative and the fourth order derivative the higher one is the fourth order derivative so the order of this sixth differential equation is 4 and you know students uh, the good thing about uh, order is that you don't have to worry about other things whether the polynomial equation is formed or not formed order is always defined if the highest uh, order derivative is 4 uh, without uh, seeing other things uh, i i am just referring to that polynomial equation in the derivatives that that you don't have to see while finding the order so the order of this differential equation is 4 and what about it uh, its degree degree is not defined in this case don't jump to the conclusion that degree in this case will be 1 because d4y upon dx4 is raised to the power 1 here but why degree is not defined the other derivative which is coming or involved in this differential equation uh, which we have uh, uh, denoted by y triple dash this is actually d3y by dx3 third order derivative this is not forming a polynomial equation this is coming inside sine function so here it is not forming a polynomial equation so therefore this is a reason for the degree not being defined order 4 degree not defined and finally the seventh one uh, you can guess easily in spite of this power 4 and this 2 don't get confused highest order derivative is d2s by dt2 this is the second order and uh, when uh, you are considering its uh, degree d2s by dt2 you know is raised to the power 1 this is power 4 but it is not the highest order derivative so highest order derivative is this d2s by dt2 so order is 2 and its degree is 1 so i hope i have uh, taken lot of examples to uh, clarify what order and degree is absolutely yeah. as i'm sure the students uh, have now a better idea of the order and degree of the differential equations and you have given multiple examples here so um any more examples you would like to share no uh, i think uh, we have taken adequate examples of order and degree okay. and we would like to move ahead uh, about other things which are uh, important in the differential equation okay
so moving ahead general solution now see when a uh, you know when a differential equation is given to you what is expected of us to do besides order and degree uh, in fact order and degree are important because we are able to categorize the differential equation hmm. whether it is of first order second order uh, whether it is linear so for that we define it but then the main important um, work or the main important concept of the differential equation is to solve the differential equation hmm. now how to solve a differential equation before we uh, start solving a differential equation we should know uh, there are two types of solution okay one is the general solution of the differential equation and the other is the particular solution so first we would like to understand uh, what is the general solution of the differential equation see it is very important to know the concepts the concept should be crystal clear and then we can do as many questions uh, as we like okay uh, so the main emphasis in the beginning is to uh, define what a differential equation is and then after knowing what a differential equation is we have to understand what is its order and degree i hope order and degree we have taken at length uh, it should not be a problem mm. now what is the general solution of a differential equation uh, let us take the curve y equal to fx i am starting with some function y equal to fx now y is equal to a sin i am taking some i am starting with some function y equal to fx let us say y is equal to a sin x plus b i am taking a particular example where a b are some real numbers right now if i find derivative here uh, it's very simple derivative of a sin x plus b is a cos x plus b derivative of sin is cos we all know now this is the first uh, first derivative which i have found i am finding the second derivative also d2 y by dx2 the second order derivative is this a is a constant derivative of cos is minus sin so second order derivative comes out to be minus a sin x plus b now what you observe we started with a sin x plus b y was a sin x plus b and later on when i have differentiated it twice again i am getting a sin x plus b so what i can do is i can substitute the value of a sin x plus b from the first equation if you see the first equation a sin x plus b is equal to y now if a sin x plus b is equal to y i'll substitute the value here so i'll get d2y by dx2 is equal to minus y the reason is starting with a sin x plus b i am again getting the in the second uh, order derivative i am again getting a sin x plus b the in fact minus a sin x plus b the reason is sin and cos their derivatives alternate i am differentiating sin i am getting cos i am differentiating cos i am getting minus sin so ultimately in the second order uh, derivative gives us a chance to get back uh, to get the to obtain the value of second derivative in terms of y so d2y by dx2 is equal to minus y now solving this we get d2y by dx2 plus y is equal to 0 so this is the differential equation which we have obtained d2y by dx2 plus y equal to 0 now this y equal to a sin x plus b from where i started this is called the solution curve of the differential equation so what the what is the solution y equal to a sin x plus b from where i started and what is the differential equation d2y by dx2 plus y equal to 0 so students uh, what you have to know is that if i am starting uh, with a function like let us say y equal to sin curve or y equal to um, like uh, some quadratic function so when i am starting with a function that, that is the solution in and if i am differentiating it in the final form i am getting the differential equation so differential equation is d2y by dx2 plus y equal to 0 and the earlier one the initial first step y equal to a sin x plus b it is the solution of the differential equation now see as i have differentiated the solution to obtain the differential equation we can also integrate the differential equation to obtain the solution so that that relation is always there differentiating the solution we obtain differential equation integrating the differential equation you will obtain the solution the initial solution which we are having now if you look at this y equal to a sin x plus b is called the solution curve of the differential equation now the differential equation is this and this is the solution now further uh, one more thing i have to make it clear to you that why it is called the general solution why it is called the general solution it is called the general solution because the solution is in terms of arbitrary constants a and b if i say dif differential equation is d2y by dx2 plus y equal to 
and the solution is y equal to a sin x plus b. We have two arbitrary constants a and b whose values will change and you get different curves which are the solution of the same differential equation. So if the solution contains arbitrary constants in this case which are a and b it is known as the general solution of the differential equation. I hope uh, this is clear to all of you why it is known as general solution of the differential equation because the differential equation consists of arbitrary constants one thing and second important thing which I have told you if the solution is given you differentiate you obtain the differential equation and conversely if the differential equation is given to us we can integrate and do the reverse step to obtain the solution of the differential equation. Now moving ahead uh, I will take up some question of verifying uh, the solution of a differential equation verify that the function y equal to x sin x is the solution of the differential equation this x y dash which is uh, y dash means dy by dx is equal to y plus x and within the radical sign we have x square minus y square where x is non-zero and x is greater than y. Now how to prove that this is the solution of the differential equation I have told you if the solution is given and you have to show it is the solution of the differential equation the best thing is start with the solution and differentiate it to obtain the differential equation. So since both the solution and differential equation is given to us we will start with the solution and differentiate it to obtain the differential equation. Had it been uh, uh, to find a solution of the differential equation then this is not given to us then we, we cannot um, uh, do it by finding the derivative because the solution is not given. In this case the solution is given and we will differentiate it to obtain the differential equation. Now just see the steps. First is uh, we are given y equal to uh, x sin x. Uh, we are given y equal to x sin x and we have to prove that this y equal to x sin x satisfies this differential equation which is given to us in this step. Now first is I will find y dash, y dash stands for the derivative, I am applying product rule right. So first uh, derivative of x is 1 sin x as it is plus x as it is derivative of sin x is cos x. Now I am multiplying both sides by x. Why I am multiplying both sides by x in this step? Because see what I want to show. I want to find value of x y dash. So I want to find value of x y dash that is the reason I multiplied uh, with x on both sides. So I am getting x y dash is equal to x sin x multiplying this whole by x into plus x multiplied by x cos x and then x y dash is equal to now what is x sin x? x sin x is y. So x sin x is y I have written y in place of x sin x plus x and this I have introduced this square root sign. Why I introduced this square root sign because the differential equation demands that in the differential equation I have x multiplied by square root of x square minus y square. So that is the reason I have written x cos x as square root of x square cos square x. I just squared this up and written the radical sign square root sign. Now x y dash plus y x y dash is equal to y plus x. Now all of us know that cos square x is 1 minus sin square x and if you write 1 minus sin square x we will get x square minus x sin x whole square. So x y dash is equal to y plus x square root x square minus and again x sin x I have uh, earlier also I have substituted y in place of x sin x here. See in this place I have written y and again I am getting x sin x whole square I will write y. So we are able to deduce the differential equation starting from the solution. Therefore uh, we can say we have already verified that y equal to x sin x is the solution of the differential equation. Okay. I hope uh, students are able to follow this. Yes. And so I have a doubt here. Yeah. So um, do we generally use the square root when we verify any one of the equations like no. we used in this one? Yeah. Actually uh, why I have introduced the square root here is because the differential equation which we have to prove has that square root sign. Oh. So we have to ultimately we see we are starting with the solution and we differentiating this solution we are obtain we have to obtain this differential equation hmm. and since the differential equation consists of this uh, square root sign and therefore it is imperative for us to somehow get this uh, radical sign and okay. then obtain the form. Okay, okay. So it depends on the equation whether we are using the square root or not. Yeah, of course. Okay. In fact, you know the 
equation gives us a hint right. about the steps which we have to follow. Okay. So uh, you have to starting with the solution, you have to always have an eye on the differential equation hmm. and then uh, you can know what we have to do and these steps are basically uh, derived from looking at the differential equation. Okay. So moving ahead, uh, again a small example I have taken, verify that the function uh, y is equal to e minus 3x is the solution of this differential equation. Now this is a, a simple question in which the solution is given to us and then the differential equation is given to us. It is a similar question as I have done earlier. Think about it, I will give you a few seconds to ponder. So nothing, what you have to do is first you find the first derivative, then you find the second derivative and then value of y is already given to us, we will just substitute in the left hand side of the differential equation and prove that we are able to get 0 by cancelling all the terms. And hence we will be able to show that uh, this uh, function y equal to e raised to 1 minus 3x is satisfying this differential equation. So we start with uh, y equal to e raised to 1 minus 3x, right? Then dy by dx is, all of you know derivatives, e raised to bar fx, what is the derivative? e raised to bar fx ka derivative is e raised to bar fx multiplied by f dash x. So e raised to bar minus 3x multiplied by the derivative of minus 3x, that is minus 3. So first derivative is e raised to bar minus 3x multiplied by minus 3. Now this is our first derivative. Ek bar or derivative karenge, exponential derivative I think is very simple e raised to bar fx ka derivative kya hota hai? e raised to bar fx multiplied by f dash x. So this minus 3 is a constant e raised to bar minus 3x into minus 3 again. See this minus 3 is a multiplicative constant. e raised to bar minus 3x again if I have to differentiate, I will have e raised to bar minus 3x multiplied by minus 3. So minus 3 into minus 3 is 9 multiplied by e raised to bar minus 3x. So now why I uh, mark these three equations as 1, 2 and 3? these three are required to be substituted in our differential equation. So what I will do is this second derivative I will put here, this value of dy by dx I will put here and this is the value of y which I will put here. So I have taken substituting 1, 2 and 3 in the left hand side of the differential equation. I will get d2y by dx2 plus dy by dx minus 6y. I substitute these values and see finally what, what we get, 9 times e raised to our minus 3x and I am having minus 3 e raised to the power minus 3x and minus 6 into e raised to the power minus 3x. So 9 times e raised to the power minus 3x minus 9 times e raised to the power minus 3x. And once we get 0, uh, we have some satisfaction that we have got the answer and therefore what we have shown? We have shown that y equal to e minus 3x is the solution of this differential equation. Now uh, this uh, concept of proving the differential equation is clear to the students that we start with the solution and by differentiating it, we prove that the differential equation is true. Hmm. Now uh, I hope the first part of differential equation, the basic concepts, the solution of the differential equation, order and degree and what a differential equation we have discussed at length, uh, we will be moving uh, to our uh, next section in which uh, we will be uh, defining how many types of differential equations are there in our 12th. 12th class curriculum okay. and then how to solve them. Okay. You uh, earlier said that there are two types of solutions. One is a general solution and the other is particular yeah, solution. General and so particular. are we going to look into that as well? Yeah, we will uh, look into uh, that aspect also. But here, uh, uh, you know, we have two types of solutions. Right. But we have many different types of differential equation. Hmm. Here, uh, we will be discussing three types of differential equation. Okay. And in each one of these three, we can be asked about the two types of solutions. Okay. So these two types of solution can be asked for any one of them. Okay. But uh, before I um, uh, start uh, solving the differential equation and explaining uh, what is the uh, two types of solution, I, we have to first understand how many different types of differential equations are there. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, if you look at this slide, methods of solving first order, first degree differential equation, we must know what different types of differential equation we will be discussing. So in your um, 12th class, 
we have differential equation which we solve by separating the variables, differential equation with variable separable. Then the second type of differential equation is homogeneous differential equation. And after homogeneous differential equation, we have got linear differential equation. So differential equation with variable separable, homogeneous differential equation and linear differential equation. So these three differential equations uh, we will be covering in this chapter. Maybe today we are able to uh, just do the first one and then later the other two differential equation we will take up in the subsequent lectures. But uh, I will see, we will see uh, what part we will be able to cover. So first I will start with differential equation which are solved be because we can separate the variables. So moving ahead, this first uh, type of differential equation which we just mentioned was variable separable. So it is written here, differential equations with variable separable. So you know variable separable is a, basically a technique also to solve uh, the differential equation. Now uh, let us just look at the general format in which uh, these differential equations are there and the method to solve them. In the beginning I have taken the differential equation dy over dx is equal to fxy. Now fxy means uh, the right hand side uh, function consists of uh, both the terms x and y and on the left hand side we have got the differential coefficient or the derivative dy by dx. So what we will do is dy by dx this is fxy, I will try to find the product of two factors. So why I am able to, if I am able to factorize it like this, so that the first term contains x, gx is that means a function of x and the second one is a function of y. So if I am able to uh, somehow convert this fxy into product of two terms you can say in which the first uh, function is gx and the other is hy, that means it is I am able to write it as product of two terms in which in the first one of them is uh, in x and the other one is a function of y. Now after this step if you look at this very carefully, this dx I am taken to the other side. So this dx if it goes to the other side it comes here dx. So this from second uh, step to third step I have done nothing but just taken this dx on the right hand side. And now what I have done on the side of dy I will I want all terms of y and on the side of dx I want all terms of x and both dy and dx should be in the numerator on the opposite sides. On the left hand side I am having dy, on the right hand side I am having dx, both dy and dx have to be in the numerator, the other terms gx and hy I have to just I can transfer from one side to the other and ensure that along with dy I have terms of y and along with dx I have a function of um, or terms of x so that I can integrate it then. So what we do is dy divided by hy is equal to this is gx dx integral of gx dx. Now basically uh, students uh, uh, probably you might find this slightly difficult because I am not taking a particular example. I am taking a generalized uh, case. I am trying to explain what a differential equation of a variable separable is and what basic step we are trying to do. I am trying to separate the variables. So if on the side of dy I have uh, all y terms and on the side of dx I have gx which is the uh, term of x or the factor which involved x is on the right hand side. Now integrate both sides, I will get, the, the I will integrate it, I am saying let us say hy is the antiderivative of this 1 upon hy and uh, gx capital gx is the integral uh, which I will obtain by integrating uh, small gx. So finally I will get a relation between independent variable x, dependent variable y and some constant. So this is the solution of the differential equation. So this is the basic general concept which we will apply solving differential equations with variable separable. Now moving ahead, I will take up few examples based on solving the differential equation. Look at this, dy by dx is equal to 1 plus x square multiplied by 1 plus y square. Now the good thing in this question is already you can see the right hand side is already product of two uh, factors. The first factor is in x and the, se uh, the second factor is in y. So this gives us a hint that it is of variable separable type. So first thing I will do is I will take this dx on the right hand side. So if we take this dx on the right hand side either left hand side mein denominator mein hai, right mein ja kar wo numerator mein hoga. Then on the side of dy, 
I transferred this term of y, 1 plus y square. And on the right side, in which dx is there, I will just retain the term of x. So basically the term which is on the right hand side, dx ke saath x ki term hai, let it be there, no problem. But dy ke pass, hume this term of 1 plus y square which is multiplied on the right hand side will go to the other side and get divided. And once I have separated the variables, dy upon 1 plus y square, 1 plus x square dx will integrate both sides, integrating both sides and then you know I have told you integral is the final step. So what about integral of 1 uh, upon 1 plus y square? You remember 6 special integrals, 6 important integrals which we have done tan inverse y. You know derivative of tan inverse y is 1 upon 1 plus y square. So the integral, the basic anti derivative, right? So what about 1? Integral of 1 is x and what about x square? Its integral is x cube by 3 plus c. So this is the solution of the differential equation. Now this is the first question I have done of variable separable. I have got this differential equation. I have separated the variables. I have done the integration. This is the solution. The original was the differential equation. This is the solution of the differential equation. It is a relation between the two variables x, y and in terms of the constant is also there. Since we are not finding the value of the constant, this is a general solution. If we find the value of the constant, then it becomes a particular solution, which we discussed earlier that uh, general solution because c is coming as it is. Therefore, this is a case of general solution. Now moving ahead quickly we will do one more question, solve the differential equation y log y dx minus x dy equal to 0. Uh, do not get confused that uh, different derivative uh, symbol dy by dx or that term is not visible here. What we do is you can write it in dy by dx form also, but there is no need to write. What I will do is I will take this x dy the second term on the right hand side. Once I have written the second term on the right hand side, I have both dx and dy on opposite sides of the equation and both dx and dy are in the numerator. So if you are applying variable separable, the best way is take one term to the other side or all terms which contain dx on one side, let us say it is left hand side here, all terms which contain dy on the right hand side, right? Here uh, luckily we have only one term each. Now on the side of dx, we will write all terms of x. So this x I have shifted to the other side, either uh, multiply or either divide over. And on the side of dy, I want all terms of y. Um, actually there is no term of y on the right hand side, but there are two terms, uh, two terms or two factors you can say, term to ek either, y log y, this I will write here. So, on the side of dy, I have terms of y. Or, uh, below dx in the denominator, I have a term of x. Now why we do this? Because when I have written dx, I must have all the terms of x on that side. Or either dy likha hai, udar sub terms y ke hona chahiye. Then only we will be able to integrate. Now integrating both sides, left side with respect to x, right side with respect to y. All of you know this, it is the one of the simplest integrals. What is integral of 1 by x? Log x. Why I have written mod? because log is um, defined only in case of positive, log of only positive quantity is defined. So here we write log of x, mod x. And dy upon y log y can be written as 1 by y upon log y. So if you write 1 by y upon log y, derivative of log y, you know derivative of log y is 1 by y which is coming in the numerator, you know this is type 2, there is a function in the denominator its derivative is present in the numerator. So 1 by y log y ka integral is log of log y, log of denominator plus c. All these things uh, you have already done. So that is the reason I told you in the beginning of the class that all the formulas or concepts which you have learnt earlier, you should revise. You will not face any problem in differential equation because finally we are integrating. So if you know and remember all the formulas of integral, then you will be able to solve the differential equations very easily. Uh, moving ahead, uh, just a minute, yeah, 
solve this differential equation another important question uh, uh, this is given in your NCRT books also 12th class sec square x 10 y dx plus sec square y 10 x dy equal to 0. So, what I do is I shift one term to the right hand side and I am separating the variables as we have done earlier. So, one term I have dy term I have taken on right hand side term of dx on left hand side I have separated the variables I am getting this. Now, integrating both sides see derivative of 10 x is sec square x. So, derivative of denominator is present in the numerator so log 10 x. On the right hand side also the same thing is there the just change of variable so minus log 10 y. You know when both the solutions involve log we have a tendency to write c as log c because it helps in uh, simplification. So, log 10 x I shift this to the other side log 10 x plus log 10 y is equal to log c. So, log 10 x 10 y is log c log log will cancel out 10 x 10 y is c. So, this is our solution 10 x 10 y is c. So, basically what you have to remember is that the solution should contain only uh, the variables x and y along with the constant the derivative should not be there. So, that is what uh, is clear to you from this uh, example finally, I will uh, take up the other one we discussed earlier hmm. the general solution hmm. now here I am taking the particular solution. Okay. Now, uh, if you uh, remember that we took I think a sin a sin x plus b, but here I am taking a specific values of a and b hmm. it is the same example which we took in the general solution hmm. particular solution may the only difference is I am suppose I am starting with uh, some function of uh, x as 2 sin x plus pi by 4. So, here in place of a I have taken 2 and in place of b I have taken pi by 4. Now, if I differentiate 2 sin x plus pi by 4 I will get 2 cos x plus pi by 4 differentiating again I will get minus 2 sin x plus pi by 4. So, same way as done earlier x sin pi by 4 is y from here this is y 2 sin x pi 2 sin x pi x plus pi by 4 is y. So, this this 2 sin x plus pi by 4 I am replacing by y. So, d 2 y by d x 2 is minus y and d 2 y by d x 2 plus y equal to 0 I am getting the same differential equation which we obtained in the general solution but I have started with particular values of a and b. So, in this case this phi 1 x this function of x which which is given here is a particular solution. Suppose, I start with the differential equation and I am able to get this solution hmm. with the help of uh, some initial value conditions then this type of solution is known as a particular branch amongst the many branches or curves this is a particular curve which is the solution. So, this phi 1 x contains no arbitrary constant when I say phi 1 x it is this initial function it is not containing a and b. So, uh, it, it is not containing no arbitrary constant no arbitrary constant means the particular values of the parameter a and b are there therefore, it is called the particular solution of the differential equation. So, uh, you will always find that um, uh, in a differential equation sometimes we find the values of the arbitrary constants a and b then it is known as a particular solution. Now, uh, let us quickly look at uh, another question in which we have to find the particular solution of a differential equation. Now, if you look at your screen uh, we have this question x x square minus 1 dy by dx is equal to 1 this is our differential equation and and y equal to 0 when x equal to this additional information is given to you uh, see when I am asking you a particular solution in 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 the initial thing if you see find the particular solution then these initial value conditions are given you know why y equal to 0 and x equal to 2 is given it is given to find value of the constant c to determine the particular value of the constant. Now, let me uh, explain you how these questions are done the question will be done in the same manner as, as we do the general solution. In fact, students uh, when you are finding the particular solution you first find the general solution only after finding the general solution there is an extra step of substituting these initial value conditions this uh, when x is 2 y is 0 this we will put in the general solution to obtain the value of c. So, let us uh, see the working 
uh, I start with this x x square minus 1 dy is equal to dx. I have shifted this dx to the right hand side. I get this. Next is the next step is along with dy there is no term of y so it remains dy only. In fact, it is 1 dy here and on the right hand side it is dx upon x uh, dx upon x uh, within brackets multiplied by x square plus 1. Now, uh, can you see uh, how we have solved this? You remember uh, your uh, partial fractions? I hope. Uh, yes, thoda partial fraction kyun hai. It is a, if you look at this function, it is a rational expression. And this rational expression is also of what type of rational expression it is? A proper or improper? It is an improper or proper. Improper is one in the degree of numerator is greater, but here degree of denominator is greater. So, it is a proper rational expression. So, we make partial fractions. You remember how we did a upon x uh, plus, uh, in fact, this should be x square minus 1 here, x square minus 1. This plus is uh, to be uh, minus is here. So, we will make uh, partial fractions in which these values will, uh, there is a correction that you have to write minus here and then you will get these partial fractions. And then after this solving it uh, because uh, you know all these generally are type 2 uh, integrals in which uh, you have f dash x upon f x. So, y equal to minus log x plus half log x plus 1 plus half log x minus 1 plus c. Now, the initial condition was when x is 2 y is 0. So, I will substitute this uh, in place of y I will put 0, see here in place of y I will put 0, in place of x I will put 2. So, log minus log 2 and uh, plus half log 3, if I put 2 here, 2 plus 1 is 3, plus half log 1 plus c uh, and uh, log 1 is 0 to any base log 1 is always 0. So, 0 is equal to 1 by 2 log 3 minus log 2, c is equal to, I am shifting this to the other side log 2 minus half log 3 which is equal to 1 by 2 log 4 by 3. So, this value of the constant which we have determined I will replace in the solution here. I will replace this value of the constant which we have derived by substituting y equal to 0 when x is 2 in this differential equation in the general solution I will obtain value of c and I will put it here. So, this is how um, uh, we obtain the solution of this differential equation. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, I have a question here. So, um, in this uh, solution, yeah. um, you wrote that when x is equals to 2 and y is equals to 0. So, did you assume these values? No, we these uh, values are given in the uh, question itself. Okay. Along with the differential equation, these are known as initial value conditions. These are given in the question in which the particular solution is asked uh, and these help us to find the value of the constant. Okay. And uh, in the earlier solution, uh, the pi was there, right? Uh, so, um, and we know that uh, the uh, uh, there is a term for pi, we use 24 by 7. So, can we put the value of pi and then solve it? No, no. Actually, you know, pi uh, is not a rational number. Okay. Pi equal to 22 by 7 is uh, just an approximation. Right. So, here in these questions in our uh, differential equation, hmm. we will substitute pi as pi only. Okay. Let us say we have cos pi by 2 somewhere. So, cos pi by 2, the values we know cos pi by 2 is 0. Hmm. So, pi may 22 by 7 differential equation may not use karenge hmm. and pi being a non-terminating, non-recurring, it is an irrational number. Right. So, we cannot take that liberty here in our uh, in differential, differential equation. Okay. Yeah. So, um, it was very interesting and we understood the concept of differential equations and there are three types of differential equations and all are important. Uh, but sir, would you like to give us any any of the equations to our students as homework because we don't have any more time to discuss any more things. Uh, homework they can uh, take up uh, questions from NCRT book only okay. because uh, the exercises and the questions given are in a proper systematic order. Absolutely. I would uh, like them to do the initial two exercises in which order degree is there and the variable separable uh, uh, exercise is there uh, that I think they can do. 
but uh, one last thing uh, which i want to tell the students is mm. that differential equation is very important it is right. it, it has pe practical uh, applications mm. everywhere mm. not only in mathematics in uh, other subjects like sciences and uh, uh, like uh, newton's law of cooling is there okay. uh, you have got uh, half life carbon dating and all those things mm. uh, it it is a practical subject it has immense use Right. And maybe in the next uh, lecture, uh, if uh, time permits, I will uh, discuss uh, how important, important it is it and is. Where, what are its applications. Okay. okay. So, we will definitely look forward to our next session of uh, differential equations only. Thank you so much, sir, for being with us today and uh, for uh, making us understand the concept of differential equations. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tanvi, ma'am. And thanks to all my uh, students uh, who have... Uh, uh, studied today and uh, my only thing is that it is mathematics is not a spectator sport mm. that you just listen and uh, you will learn yes. you have to practice <laughs> so whatever you have learnt you practice and do some questions from your NCRT books and in the next uh, lecture we will uh, continue uh, further uh, in uh, the differential equation absolutely thank you thank you so much sir thank you and thank you to all our uh, children of 12th class who were watching this program and uh, just like before starting this uh, concept of differential equation sir said that thoroughly do your integration concept the concept of integration should be clear in your head uh, that's how you will proceed for differential equations and we understood a lot of things uh, in this particular program but uh, like I said there is a lot more left and uh, we will definitely continue in the second part of differential equations that will come very very soon. So thank you so much for watching this program I really hope that you enjoyed it and if there are any doubts of course you can reach out to us and you can um, you know, mail us on our email id which is dth.class12 at the rate cit.nic.in. We are wrapping up our today's program right here, right now. But uh, we will come back again on Monday with new more topics and uh, new subjects. So keep on watching PME with their channels and take great care of yourself. I am Tanvi Khurana taking a leave of you. Thank you once again. Namaskar.